this is just a quick recap on how um, the business case gets generated and what you need to fill in everything in red you should not touch um, that only gets updated by myself on a weekly basis the areas where you may type are anywhere on the PIR the green blocks represent uh, the inputs which will be dragged across into the business case so they are vitally important I've put some notes next to them which we can neaten up and clean up over time and then in the event that you have added generate integration or an additional something or the other to the cost of the system say for example it's a ground mount system uh, that will go there um, you'll then generate your quotation based on um, on a price and not on a rand per watt where you'll type it in here in the green block price per watt so I will get that in the next render a little bit more efficient it will appear down here price of the PV system but for now um, you just need to type it for this week in there so please just take care while using the document so you guys all all familiar with the the PIR we've been through all of this in the training important on this it says here uh, proposed PV system size you need to add the kilowatt peak in the back of it and then here it says numbers only the PV array size and inverter size you need to be quite specific with the PV array size because you'll see that the formulas all drag through price related to that size of system as well as the square meters required the weight of the system and all of that okay so that that is the the latest information these blue blocks you shouldn't adjust anything on them um, we've left the, uh, the escalation of electricity at 8% for all regions these are just information about the products uh, the reason I've put them in the PIR is because if you are using a SunGrow or a, um, a Huawei somewhere down the line we'll need to change this and type it in but for now this is fine the other new addition I wanted to show you was this so for example if the client was using 22,500 kilowatt hours per month um, let's just say You would, you would type in the client's annual consumption and see exactly how much he was using on a monthly basis. Um, this is a nice function where, I think I got one extra digit there, um, a nice function where you'll be able to give your client some feedback on his profile. So for example on this one, you're going to go to Helioscope, you'll naturally fill in what came on the Helioscope, so let's type in that one, 261500. But if this was the helioscope and on the, on the consumption versus solar chart you get a nice graph that comes out like this which shows on an annualized basis realistically how much of your electricity would come from solar and how, of it, how much of it would be supplied by the grid so this is a nice way for you guys to actually print it and show your client which portion of their load would be taken care of by solar uh, in this it would be more along the lines of um, of that so yeah a little bit more like that realistically if we were aiming for 70% but you can see that it seasonally adjusts the load and shows what would happen during the course the cash flow analysis section has been changed to suit your region and suit your uh, your currency um, the other thing is on the Swazi side we've taken out the taxing cent uh, incentives because they don't apply in country and your proposal document looks exactly exactly the same the things that will be changing on a weekly basis are US dollar price which doesn't really affect the rate it just gives the client an indication as to what rate we used at that time and uh, the cost per watt as well as O&M escalation cost so there's a different O&M cost build up per system size because the smaller systems are a little bit more expensive on O&M whereas the bigger systems are slightly more cost effective so we, it can't be proportional from 30 to a megawatt 
So that's why there are these four different proposals for price per watt and cost of own M per watt. So the four that you'll be getting are they are a thirty two they're gonna be a thirty to sixty kilowatt, a sixty to one twenty, a one twenty to three hundred, and a three hundred to one megawatt. Those will be all your templates to use. So it's vital that you use the right template. Don't touch the red blocks. We are going to lock cells and neaten things up and clean it up. But we can really catch up the workload that we've currently got based on the current document. Um, if there's any spelling mistakes or any grammatical errors, just send me a WhatsApp or a message or something and I'll, I'll happily look at it. So just going back to the document, when you PDF it, just make sure on your system, I don't know if it drags it through on everybody's, but scale to fit on one page. It becomes a nice document that's easily to read on one page. Um, same as if you had to go to the cash flow summary. Uh, you would see that it fits on one page quite nicely with all of the information. So back to the PIR. All of the stuff is typical. This is the new addition to the, to the load profile so that you can understand what uh, what the client's load profile looks like. It'll give them a really nice understanding if they're going to be wasting power at times of the year. For example, if they're an irrigation company and they don't irrigate during um, three months of the year, they show them how much is actually going to get wasted. So on the next render, we'll refine that a little bit more just to show how much would be exported to the grid and how much would come from the grid um, just as we evolve the, the sheet. Perfect. Let's uh, test it out and let's see if we can if we can get a couple deals across the line with it. Um, last thing before I shoot off on the proposal itself, all of these rental amounts that are included in here are calculated according to the broad reach capital sheet that they gave. So they are fairly accurate. I've compared them to ones that we've previously done, as well as two or three that we sent through to broad reach directly, and they are within a couple rand. Uh, if not cents from the, the correct figures. So that'll give you a nice indication as to what your rental is going to be either a 10 year. We've removed the, the cash flow neutral option because nobody ever asks for it. And to be frank, I mean, we rather offer the five or the 10 year option. If they want a seven year, it's quite easy just to use the sheet and type out what the seven year, eight year, nine year would be, but they're not typical offerings from the word go. Um, the other thing that we've that we've added at the top here is the weight per kilogram uh, per square meter. Uh, sorry, weight of the panels per square meter. So it does give a nice indication of what the weight is going to be, and and how it all works out for the roof.